Hi everyone, today we are going to study IPv4 that is Internet Protocol version 4. But before we start the Internet Protocol version 4, we must know what Internet Protocol is. The IP or Internet Protocol as we call it, it is that glue that holds the Internet Protocol. It was designed with obviously internetworking in mind wherein we could exchange messages among different hosts. Its job is to provide a way to transport datagrams that is the smaller units of data from source to destination but without any guarantee. That is the IP protocol is an unreliable protocol wherein there is no acknowledgement for the recept recept of a datagram. And it transports the datagrams from source to destination without regard to whether the machines are on the same network or whether they are other networks in between them. So it does not matter whether the datagrams are being transported to the machines between the same network or among different networks. That is not the concern. You can transmit data between any two hosts irrespective of the fact whether they exist in the, within the same network or they are part of two different networks. The transport layer takes data streams and break them into datagrams. So it is the responsibility of the transport layer to take the data streams and then it breaks into smaller units which are known as datagrams. The <coughs> maximum size of the datagrams can be up to 64 kilobytes each but in practice they are usually not more than 1500 bytes. So they can easily fit in one ethernet frame and each datagram is then transmitted through the internet, possibly being fragmented into smaller units as it goes. So when all the pieces of data finally get to the destination machine, here they are reassembled by the network layer into their original datagram form. So this datagram is then handed to the transport layer which inserts it into the receiving process's input stream. Now let's get on to IP version 4. So as you already know that IP stands for Internet Protocol and V4, this V4 here represents the version of the IP or the Internet Protocol which in this case is the version 4, hence IPv4. IPv4 or the IP version 4 was the primary version brought into action for production within the ARPANET in 1983. So ARPANET you know stands for the Advanced Research Project Agency Network which was basically used for communication for military purposes. So a network which was uh, which came into action uh, because of military purposes to exchange data within the military uh, uh, within the military. So this was the first version of the internet protocol IP version 4 and it was uh, brought into action in the year 1983. Now the IP version 4 addresses are 32 bit integers. So they can be represented using 32 bits and which are expressed in the decimal notation which we also call the dot notation. Example of an IP version 4 address can be like this like 192 decimal 0 decimal 2 decimal 126 could be an example of an IPv4 addresses that is hypothetically you can visualize here that this is how an IP version 4 address looks like. Now what are the different parts of this address? So the different parts of IP version 4 are the first part is the network part. So the network part basically indicates the distinct variety that's appointed to the network because communication is not just happening within a network but outside a network also. Different hosts on different networks also communicate with each other. So with the help of the network part basically we get to know the variety of the network that is a, uh, a variety of the network or the type of network. So basically it is used for identifying the category of the network that's assigned. So what is the category of that network is usually identified with the help of the network part. Then is your host part. Now host part uniquely identifies the host or machine on your network. Within the network which host you are communicating to is identified with the help of the host part. 
so this part of the ip version 4 address is assigned to every host because every host is unique for each host on a network the network part is same so if you are within the same network obviously your network part will be same but host part will be different for all the host even within the same network right so just like different people stay in the same home they have the same home address so the home address you can think of as the network part and different people have different identity they have different aadhar cards so those different people uh, you can think of as different hosts so within the same network you have different hosts just like within the same ho home address you have different people residing so the home address for them would be same but their aadhar cards would be different similarly within the same network the network part for all the host host would be same but the host part would be different for all the hosts since all hosts are unique okay now let's come to the next part which is the subnet number now what is the subnet number so the local networks that have massive number of hosts within a network there if there are larger number of hosts then that network is divided into sub networks which is also known as subnets right and these subnet numbers are then appointed to those small small subnets within a network now let's look at the ip version 4 datagram header what does how does the datagram header looks like so basically the size of the header is 20 to 60 bytes so the minimum size of the header can be 20 bytes and the maximum size of the header can be 60 bytes now let's look at how the header looks like so as you can see here there are various fields the version field which is 4 bits hlen a header length 4 bits type of service it provides 8 bits for that then uh, there is total length of the header which is uh, 16 bits then the identification uh, uh, a uh, field which is of 16 bits res which represents the null bit is of 1 bit then the df field which means don't fragment is of 1 bit then the mf bit, uh, bit which means more fragment is assigned 1 bit again then fragment offset is of 16 bits then is the time to live field which is of 8 bits then the, the protocol field is of 8 bits then the header checksum is of 16 bits the source ip is of 32 bits then the destination ip is of 32 bits again then the option field is uh, 0 to 40 bytes minimum is 0 and maximum is 40 bytes then is your data field so data field can be uh, from 20 bytes to 6000 uh, 65536 bytes so each of these rows you can see have been assigned maximum number of bytes that they can represent like the first uh, field, uh, row is of 4 bytes then the second row is of 4 bytes third row is of 4 bytes uh, this row is of 4 bytes destination ip row is of 4 bytes now we will discuss all of them in detail that is all these fields we will discuss in detail now okay <clears throat> so the version field so basically the version field represents the version of the ip protocol that the, that is which version of ip protocol you are using here it is ipv4 so that means we are using version 4 Uh, four bits are reserved for the version field then the hlen field represents the header length so the ip header length for which four bits are reserved now this is the number of 32 bit words in the header maximum you can have 32 um, bit words in the header the minimum value that you can have for this field is 5 and the maximum is 15 okay now the type of service type of service basically represents this field tells what kind of service is being provided whether whether it is a low delay service whether is it it is a high throughput service whether it is a reliability service depending upon the priority whether you want low delay whether you want high throughput whether you want you are okay with delay but you want high reliability so what kind of service is being provided is represented with the help of type of service uh, bit again 8 bits are reserved for this field then is your total length field so the total length represents the length of the header plus data 
data part plus header part uh, represents the total length and this is for 16 bits which has a minimum value the minimum value that you can have here is 20 bytes and the maximum value uh, of this uh, header plus data can be of 65535 bytes and not beyond that so you cannot go down the minimum bytes and you cannot go up the or go beyond the maximum bytes <coughs> okay then is your identification field identification field is unique packet id for identifying the group of fragments of a single ip datagram <clears throat> so a single datagram is then fragmented into smaller data units as you see, uh, know so each uh, uh, data uh, each uh, fragment of that datagram is assigned a unique id so that you can identify them so this identification field is used for that and 16 bits are used to represent the identification field then is the flags field now the flag uh, field has three flags for one bit each so this is the uh, uh, flag fields that you can uh, that you can see here so these are known as the flag fields this res df and mf these are known as the flag fields so three flags as you can see in the diagram there are of one bit each reserved bit must be zero right and do not fragment flag res represents the res uh, uh, bit here as you can see represents the reserved um, bit this is do not fragment and this is no fragments so reserved bit must be zero do not fragment that is the df field uh, flag more fragment flag that is the mf should be of same order then is your fragment offset now the fragment offset represents the number of data bytes ahead of the particular fragment in the particular data gram right so if you have a particular fragment so how many data bytes are ahead of this that is from where it is starting and where it is finishing can be usually identified with the help of the fragment offset so it is specified in terms of number of 8 bytes which has maximum value of 65528 bytes time to live field the time to live field is the data represents the datagram's lifetime which is represented in 8 bits it prevents the datagram to loop through the network right so time to live field basically uh, identifies for how long the datagram can exist in the network if beyond that time it does not reach its destination it is dropped off so there is a counter that is started when a a datagram or a fragment is injected into the network and when the counter reaches zero its timer expires and that particular datagram if within that particular time does not reach its destination then it's dropped off to avoid continuous looping within the networks right by restricting the number of hops so taken by a packet before delivering to a destination so this is basically uh, uh, before the uh, this is uh, basically uh, to avoid unnecessary looping of the packet within the network so as soon as the counter reaches zero the packet is or the uh, datagram fragment is dropped off so this uh, is represented with the help of the time to live that is for how long the fragment can be in the network before being dropped off okay then is the protocol field protocol field basically tells what protocol is being used name of the protocol to which the data is to be passed so this is represented using 8 bits so the protocol can either be udp or tcp so what protocol is you being used this is identified with the help of the protocol field then is your header checksum now the header checksum is of 16 bits 16 bits are reserved for the header checksum field and uh, <coughs> The header checksum is used for obviously checking errors in the datagram header. Whatever uh, errors there are, if any, in the datagram header would be uh, checked using the header checksum. The source IP address. Now the source IP address is of 32 bits and, uh, I, uh, and it represents the IP address of the source or the sender then is your destination ip address the destination ip address is again of 32 bits and it represents the ip address of the destination or the receiver then the option field the optional information such as the source route there are some optional informations which may or may not be there hence it is given the name option field so information such as the source route the route through which the source would uh, send or transmit its fragments the record route this is used by the network 
administrator to check whether a path is working or not. So due to the presence of options, the size of the datagram header can be of variable length as we discussed in the beginning itself when we were discussing the IP version 4 header that it can be of variable length from 20 to 60 bytes.